Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Pressure on APC governors over tickets for senators and reps. <coughs> L-56 wiping out of communities on Kaduna Abuja Highway. Hmm. Salami panels reports a Magu stall two years after. Tinumbu to Bauchi delegates. With you, I will win. Many Okada riders are criminals, says Commissioner of Police. And I pop to Kumuyi. No crusade. Okay. It's starting with um, uh, which Kaduna story? State's right. governor, uh, El Rufa, yesterday has uh, proposed the clearance of Katari, Rijana, and Akilibu communities along the Kaduna Abuja Highway. The way Miriam is nodding, I got the pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so according to him, he said that they harbor criminals and informants in that environment. And he had received the first quarter uh, security report for 2022, which says that 360 persons were killed and 1,389 others have been kidnapped between January and March. And he said that he got um, an intelligence that Boko Haram and uh, Ansaru terrorists were recruiting Kaduna youths. Mm. So he's expressing worry over the influx of terrorists in the states, saying that the insurgency has shifted from the northeast to the northwest and is even more dangerous and very serious in the northwest. And this should be a you know, form of concern for every other person. Uh, there was one of his um, classmates and roommates in the school that was just released after he had paid a ransom. And he said he overheard the um, terrorists discussing amongst themselves that the Kaduna bushes are better than Sambisa. So it's better for them to start moving down to the Kan Kaduna forest. So he's calling on security agencies to take this matter very seriously. Right. Mm. So the major headline, <clears throat> pressure on APC governors over tickets. So there are lots of intrigues going on right now concerning the selection of the <clears throat> Senate and the uh, member of the House of Reps. So the Senate president and, um, and um, uh, Bajabia Miller and um, Hamed Lawan have seen that automatic tickets to experienced lawmakers would help the growth of democracy. So they're appealing to the governors, especially those who are running for second term, to ensure that they give some kind of concession to the current lawmakers uh, who are experienced to come back um, to the National Assembly because there are quite a few of pending laws that they can actually use to do pass. And also, it's resolved a lot of intra-party crises that they're having right now. So there's a lot of lobbying going on, as we, as we know, and the selections of, uh, they're, they're on the way to know who and who will be um, running for each of these, especially for the Senate and for the House of Representatives. Yes. Um, and I have this story um, 24 hours, they say, after our gov uh, the governor of Lagos State had uh, announced the ban on motorcyclists. Uh, a TV channel would the police commissioner for the state uh, was at a TV channel and he was just you know answering questions and he said there's many important things that he said I don't even know if I'll be able to get them all one of the things he said is that they realized that with the ban of um, Okada it would lead to a rise in crime rates and mm -hmm. they are prepared you know for that they said um, for those who um, would be you know, who flout traffic laws, they have, they have put in place um, mobile courts mm. and um, will be char charged immediately where you are caught, whether you're a passenger or a rider, and that this has already been there, but it's just that um, sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't, you know. Just like the enforcement has not been consistent, but now they are back on it. Um, the um, commissioner also said, to be honest, most of these um, Okada riders are criminals. That many times that they have arrested them, they found them with maybe locally made pist uh, pistols and so many other things. And um, they're saying that with this ban, you know, they hope to see some form of um, sem um, sanity in our yeah. society. But he also mentioned that this ban does not affect those who personally own motorbikes, mm. does not affect um, those who use it for um, Korea. Korea. Korea okay. It's just for those particular people mm. who are meant to, and they are meant to be, um, they are meant to say in particular, to yeah. follow particular routes in particular areas. But um, there's also a story of a clash that happened in, um, in... Why are you mm. looking for that? Let me go to talk about yes, your so story. So the police, um, the Minister for Police Affairs, Mohammed Dinyadi, said that um, they were speaking to the fact that journalists asked him a question concerning the fact that two years after the former EFCC boss, Magu's report from um, um, Salami hasn't been implemented for two years. 
they, were, they, were, they remember that there was a conspiracy of corruption. There was also the conspiracy, um, conspiracy of corruption <coughs> and allegation of corruption that was supposed to be looked into, but the presidency hasn't looked into it. Now, um, the Police Service Commission also on Monday approved the promotion of this same former EFCC boss who has retired. So the journalists were asking the question that why would you promote someone who has already retired, mm -hmm. who has a case against him that hasn't been re reviewed in two years? The Minister of Police Affairs said that it is not for him to answer the question. The answer to those questions will come from right. the Police Service Commission themselves. Okay. Want to go back to that story, Mario? We'll yes, on. so okay. protesting <coughs> motorcycles blocked the Alaba Rago area of the Badagri Expressway following police clampdown. Mm -hmm. So they said over 200 uh, bikes were seized by police officers, and they said they normally do this, you know, on a consistent basis. Um, motorcyclists are saying that they did not flout any traffic laws, mm -hmm. they were doing their business in the designated areas. Okay. So this is something that is back and forth with the police. So we just hope that even with the ban, that um, the law is being followed to make sure that did not, they are not um, unjustly, you know, just targeted. Okay, moving on quickly now to the punch. Uh, uncertainty over APC PDP delegates list as Buhari delays Electoral Act. 7,256 Nigerian nurses left for UK in one year. Lagos agent allegedly breaks businesswoman's leg over 30 millionaire failed deal. Okadaban police clash with riders, seized 200 bikes as Lagos vows more raids. Man traffics wife for prostitution, sells son for 600,000 naira. Hmm. We must re strategize for Nigeria to change his Obasan job. Planned resumption of train service incentives, says abductees' families. 29 states lack insurance cover for workers, says Pencom. FG moves to end ASO strike, begins arrears payment. <clears throat> and Lagos airport shuts temporarily, flights diverted over mangled corpse hmm. on runway. Hmm. I think that's the way. So I have a human interest story. So the men of the Ogun State Police Command have arrested a man called Kingsley Essien. He's 36 years old. And um, his wife reported him to the police because she said that uh, her husband had trafficked her for prostitution to Mali. She said he approached her and told her about a job. He said this is something he's done many times before. And because he was her husband, she had no reason to <coughs> suspect him. foul play. Mm -hmm. And that when she got to Mali, she realized that she had been put under a madame and she was supposed to be prostituting. She finally was able to get herself out of there by going to the embassy and she was brought back home. She left uh, a two-year-old with her husband that they share, a child that they have. And when she got back, she realized that she could not find her child. So that's mm -hmm. when she went to the police. Um, the man was arrested. He confessed to selling her for 1.4 million into that prostitution ring and also selling their son for 600,000 naira. Jeez. So now they're looking for the person that bought the child. Mm. Hey, so painful. Sad. A businesswoman, uh, Adeinka Iwinoba, accused the land agent, Saheed, uh, of brutalizing her and her brother-in-law on the premises of their Victoria Island Garden City um, area of Lagos. So what happened was that... <coughs> His sister, Ibinoba, has paid 30 million for a land purchase. The full amount was supposed to be 120 million, and then they deposited. But along the line, they suspected that he was trying to defraud them, and so they started asking for their money back. They were going back and forth. He refused to pick their calls and respond to them till they took the matter to EFCC. And then he called them and said, okay, they need to withdraw the matter that he would be. He will pay them back the money. Mm. And the day he invited them to the office, by the time they got there, he said he got talks and they started, you know, uh, attacking them. He said she got an injury, <coughs> and had a lot to, I think broke his leg or something, mm. and they were taken to the hospital. Um, at the end of the day, it seemed, according to the story, like the police was trying to play hanky-panky, but however, he had moved 15 million to them, he had paid the balance, but the woman is now seeking for justice for the injuries that they have sustained. Mm. He claimed he did not touch them, he didn't even have any altercation with them, that he just begged them to withdraw the case and then started paying back the money, but investigations are still ongoing. Okay, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing points. Yes, Topper had a story. Yes, yeah, so um, Pencom has revealed a detail about our states. 29 states don't have group life insurance for their staff. Um, mentioned only seven states, that's Lagos, FCT, Oshu, Ondo, Ekitik, and Kaduna states are the only states that have life insurance cover. And we all know life expectancy and all the challenges. And because we know 
that the process of getting your pension out might take a while, gratuity out might take a while. Life insurance can be a short term, I mean, mm. short term um, um, comfort for many mm. of the workers. And this is saying it's not even it's not even legal. They ought to do it. The pension reform provides that every employee must maintain a group life insurance policy in favor of each employee to the minimum of three times the total um, a monument <laughs> for the employee and mm. premium must not be paid later than the date of commencement of the cover. Right. Mm. So, on a normal day, 29 states have <coughs> breached <coughs> this um, mm. section of the law mm. and they are not compliant. And a lot of the states may not be able to pay salaries. So, the least they can do is provide life insurance. So, if anything <coughs> goes wrong, the families will be compensated All the right. minimum. So, families and friends of passengers that were abducted on the Abuja Kaduna AKS9 train have warned that the federal government should not resume um, the, the, um, the train services along that line. According to them, they said that unless their, their loved ones are rescued unharmed, mm. they would resist every attempt to resume services. They also demanded the sack of the entire management of NRC because according to them, they've not reached out to them in 52 days. Wow. I yet to speak to any of them. Um, saying that this was, this was speaking on behalf of the family's Dr. Abdul Fatai Jimo told journalists at a media briefing in Kaduna on Thursday that it was unfortunate that 52 days after the abduction of their loved ones, NRC was only interested in resuming, and they said they would resist every so attempt for them to... What would resume. it take to just set up a call center and call every one of them mm. and say, we're working on it? Mm. Okay, moving on quickly now to Daily Sun. Buhari unsettles APC aspirants. Nigeria can overcome security challenges in two years with the right leader, says Obasanjo. Mm. Joe. Police burst government's shrine others in Imo State. Sit at home, Delta government advises IPOP to adopt other means of agitation. Ex-EFCC boss Mago will face trial if indicted, says federal government. And security operatives destroy 167 illegal refineries, arrest 18 alleged oil thieves in the Niger Delta. Okay, which story are we starting with? Uh, the Delta state government is urging members of the IPOP to adopt other means of, you know, driving their agitation, saying that this sit-at-home order is actually inflicting more injury on the society, the neighboring states, and also on their economy. They said that um, the suspected members killed one person, they raced two trucks and two tricycles, then they riddled the Volkswagen with bullets while attempting to enforce the sit at home in mm. a, a, um, a, um, a state, not a state, a community, Ubolu community, very close to Asaba. And um, the government was saying that the federal government has not been able to handle this issue in such a As way in. to mellow the agitations of the people. And so it appears like the sit at home is not working. It's not working for anybody. And, you know, we are all brothers and sisters. However, Uboli is in Delta State, not even in the Southeast in the first place. So he said that um, they have put security agencies on red alert in Delta State, ensuring that everybody comes out to do their work legally. I, when I saw Ubolu, I was wondering at what point did they not encroach into Delta State? Because Ubolu is in Delta State, mm. not in the Southeast. Okay. So um, the defense headquarters have said that the troops of the Delta Operation Delta Safe and Operation Dagata de Parawo have discovered and destroyed about 167 illegal refineries um, mm. in the Niger Delta in three weeks. Mm. They have also, um, since this report, 17 illegal refineries have been discovered and destroyed. Mm. Um, and in that particular operation, they said they found five wooden boats, 89 storage tanks, 59 ovens, 12 dugout pits, six pumping, pumping machines, and so many other things, you know, I, I didn't list. They said they also recovered 778,000 liters, over that of crude oil, mm. over 840,000 liters of um, AGO, and mm -hmm. 625 liters of kerosene. Um, they said 18 criminals were also arrested, you know, just to show that a lot of work is being done. They also had, uh, did their operation alongside NDLEA, and men, a lot of um, illegal substances and drugs were also found during the raid. Okay, so the former president of Nigeria, Chief Ulusha Gobasanjo, hosted one of the PDP's presidential aspirants, uh, Mohamedou Hayatuddin, uh, and, and where he was saying that Nigeria's security issues can actually be dealt with within, the next, within two years if we have the right leader. According to him, we shouldn't, um, that he has no apology for his mad passion for Nigeria, saying that Nigeria's challenges requires efforts of all citizens and we must brace up for sacrifices and must have leaders who are willing to sacrifice. He said Nigerians must brace up and ensure that um, to put Nigeria back on, on the path, we must be all willing to make sacrifices.
So okay. um, um, for the go current governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akere de Lewis, also the head, the chairman of the Southern Governors Forum, was responding to a statement accredited to <laughs> the governor of Bauchi State, the presidential aspirant under PDP, on Amotek on the Western Security Network, and he mm -hmm. said that the evolution of power is key to development. The statement was, was released by his chief press secretary, Mr. Richard Olatide, and he said the federating units must progress from this, what we currently have, which is like a semblance of autonomy <coughs> to recognition of their unique features which justifies existence, and generally saying, before we can grow as a nation, we must there must be complete devolution of power and institutional st um, strengthening the individual institution. Mm. Moving on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story not taken. Primaries APC PDP in states quick. Mm. IPOP Delta places security agencies on red alert. Newly promoted Magu has already retired, says Police Affairs Minister. Oshun Paul, I have no money for private jets or to buy votes, says Governor Yutela. <laughs> I am endowed with capacity to lead, he says. Okada ban June 1, June 1st deadline won't stop enforcement, says Lagos State Government. Sign amendment to Electoral Act to avert political crisis, reps minority caucus tell Buhari. And how I was drafted into presidential race, says Lawan. Um, El Rufai confirms presence of Ansaru terrorists in Kaduna. And families of abducted passengers kick against resumption of train service. Okay, I was going to take the story about this, the, um, the signing of the Electoral Act. Now, this matter has really, really put a lot of uh, pressure uh, on, the, on, on various political parties because the minority caucus of the House of Reps on Thursday called on the president to immediately sign. I mean, we don't know what's taking the president so long mm. just to sign this amendment into law. So the Electoral Act of 2022 that has been, tra been transmitted to him by the National Assembly uh, for assent is still pending. And they're saying that if he doesn't sign, he's going to cause a lot of the political parties to be in confusion because they need to know exactly what direction to take. Oh. If our president doesn't sign... Is they're still going to have the confusion of what to do concerning the primaries, and it's a major problem for the political party. So we don't know what's delaying our president on this matter. We should talk to Taking the SGF. Those are the ones that... Um, so, yeah, they said yes. that... So, so the caucus is calling on civil society, yes. international community, and all lovers of democracy to prevail on the president to sign to save our nation from all avoidable crisis. Okay, the other story in Tribune. Yes, okay. there's a story of the day-day market in Abuja that was burnt down, and the minister for FCT has already said that the place is closed down indefinitely. Our heart goes out to all the entrepreneurs who have lost a lot there, and mm -hmm. I must say again, it's important to do insurance. I was listening to a message yesterday, and he said, entrepreneurs must value insurance. If anything happens, that is your go-to mm. that will show up. I'm sure many of these businesses are not insured, so I mm. want to hear what the it's government is going to do to support loss. them and every other business now start mm. looking for how you can insure. So if anything goes wrong, at mm. least you have some form of circle in terms of compensation for your loss. Okay, very quickly, this day, there was a story that caught my attention in yeah. this day. Um, it says U.S., let me say it very slowly. <laughs> so they U.S. Get rank world's most secretive financial jurisdiction for illegal money. Um, Obasanjo Nigeria's Nigeria's inability to contain insecurity a choice by her leaders. So let me take this story. It caught my attention because, you know, sometimes we always think like the United States is always the best country in the world. <laughs> but it says U.S. has emerged the most secretive financial jurisdiction to hide illegal money wow, in the world, according to the 2022 Financial Security Index, wow. a comprehensive study from the Tax Justice Network. According to them, other countries, the second countries, I think, Switzerland, followed by Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, and Luxembourg. So is that, so, I mean, I, I, that was just the summary of the yeah. report. So they used to hide our money in Good. So rich people, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So the, the thing is, in this case, is that they are hiding, we are the ones stealing from us and taking um, the money yeah. there, and they are using the money to, uh, to develop them themselves. Develop their in own layman's country. terms, fantastic. So. Thank you so much. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, it's Friday. We love celebrity gist. We'll find out what's going on. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.